Hey everybody, Derek here, here to bring another video for Z Nation Season 3. I do apologize that this video was not out a few days ago, but as many of you may have heard, I did pass my bar exam. It was a very big accomplishment and a lot of people wanted to celebrate, so I've been out doing that the last couple of days along with working. But I'm back, I'm ready to make some videos and uh, keep on seeing what Z Nation has to offer us. And I'm going to be doing my review of Escorpion and the Red Hand, which was the most recent episode of Z Nation. If you are not caught up with Z Nation and you do not want to be spoiled, in any way, then I would exit the video now and come back uh, later, because otherwise you will be spoiled. Okay. Well, first off, I just got to say this past episode, probably the best so far that season three has offered. I think it was absolutely incredible. Every moment, action-packed, very much developing. This is the kind of stuff I love to see Z Nation do, and I think they balanced it out very well with villains on both sides and a lot of different things that were going on. So I think, personally, this one was the best the season has offered so far. So check it out if you have not watched it. This one's worth it. This one's important. So we have, of course, two different storylines going on in this episode. Uh, we've left Citizen Z and his uh, merry band alone, and we focused on Warren's group and um, Murphy's group again. And with uh, Warren's group, we'll start out with that real quick. What we saw was they were traveling through this area and they came across uh, these zombies that were hanging. Um, you know, they were hanging down from this bridge, their guts were all over, um, and the word thieves was written um, on the bridge they were hanging on. Now, this seemed pretty serious, you know, and a Scorpion and the others, they come across it and they realize, you know, whoever did this was obviously sending a, mes a message, these are some dangerous people, and of course, the zombies are then cut down, they have to fight them off, and it turns out that there are some survivors um, on the bridge above them, and those were the people that they were living with before those people were killed. So, the groups exchange stories, and they find out that there's this group called the Red Hand, and they basically, you know, they spray paint their hands, or they put blood on them, I don't know what it is, um, and they put their handprint everywhere, and I guess they're very dangerous people, they go out and they attack people, they hurt people, kill people, and it seems very evident in this, in this episode that they are dangerous, um, but they've been being attacked by them. And what ends up happening is, is they find out that the Red Hand Gang is led by a man named Escorpion. And you're like, wait a minute now, Hector, or otherwise known as Escorpion, that's the real guy, you know, Emilio Rivera, the actor who plays a Scorpion slash Hector on the show. We know him to be a Scorpion. Well, he can't be the leader of the Red uh, Hand Gang, and he can't be with our group at the same time. And a Scorpion even says to, you know, to his other group members, he goes, I don't know who those people are. They're not my people. Only the Zeros were my people. And they end up getting attacked by the Red Hand. So the survivors from this group and Warren's group take cover in this toy factory. And what they end up finding out um, when they go in there, um, they find out a little bit more about this gang, who they are, the fact that it's led by a scorpion. And a scorpion himself tries to keep his identity a secret because everything that they're describing about, about this imposter matches a scorpion, the tattoo on the arm of the child, things like that. So they're very similar. And of course, the group finds themselves trapped because the Red Hand is attacking. And the Red Hand, we didn't really get a lot of looks at them because they seem to attack from afar. They seem to be using different methods. Uh, so we really didn't get a look at them. Uh, so we don't really know who they are, what they um, look like. But we know how they attack, and they attack with a lot of force. Um, they were using, like, Molotov cocktails. They were using uh, a lot of fire was really what they were using was their main weapon, dynamite. And, in fact, at one point, they even use a bomb zombie. They, like, strap uh, things of dynamite around a zombie and send it in, and, of course, it's going to blow up. So they used quite a lot of weapons against the group. And a side note, you know, while uh, a lot of the episode focused on Warren and a scorpion at that point, and Addie, Doc, and Dr. Sun get assigned to a kind of sad storyline that one of Addie's teeth um, is 
rotting and she's going to get septic uh, shock. So they spend the episode fighting with her and pulling her tooth out. So that's all they did. Um, you know, it kept them involved, but I would have liked to have seen them do more. But, you know, that was the only downside of the episode. The rest of it was great. So they come across this woman inside the toy factory who is wounded. She's been shot. And the group finds out that she's one of the Red Hand. And she points out the guys, you know, and we find out that these survivors, the ones that the group is with, they're not as innocent as you'd like to think. They weren't just, you know, walking along in the Red Hand attack for no reason. No, these men actually attacked them, killed some people, took some food, and then, in a sense, they're, in a sense, getting revenge on them. So, who's right or wrong? Well, you know, I mean, in, a, in an apocalypse, it's really hard to, to state that. But that's really the reason why everybody's attacking each other. So, um, eventually, we get to a point where the Red Hand stops attacking. And a Scorpion is inside. He talks to the woman who's wounded. And we come to find out... Um, that she actually recognizes him as being the real Scorpion. She realizes this is the real deal. Um, so I don't know if this imposter sees the red hand a lot or if he works behind the scenes. It's hard to say. But she points him out as a Scorpion. And, the, of course, the survivors find out about this as well. And the survivors end up attacking him. Um, and the thing about a scorpion is that this was an episode that really forced him, or as he's been calling himself lately, Hector, his real name, he's wanted to leave the identity of a scorpion behind. We kind of saw that in the season two finale when Vasquez spared a scorpion, when he said, look, I'm not a scorpion anymore. I'm not that man anymore. I don't want to be that man. I want to leave that past behind me. You know, he kind of just wants to have a fresh start. It's in a sense, somebody who would want to reinvent themselves. It would be like faking your own death and going somewhere else and reinventing who you are. That's really what a scorpion slash Hector wants to do, but we find that really he can't outrun his past. You know, the name of Scorpion is a big uh, name that is attached to him, could be attached to other things and people, and a Scorpion finds that out the hard way, and he does end up having to kill the two survivors in self-defense because they do try to kill him, and this leaves a Scorpion very upset that he had to do that because, again, he wants to leave that identity behind him, uh, but he, he realizes he can't do it. The two of them even have a wonderful conversation at the very end of the episode where Scorpion really says about how he really wants to leave his ghost of a scorpion behind him, but that he can't. He realizes that it's always going to follow him, and he really just warns the group, like, look, if I'm around, you're going to be in danger, and you might get killed. And Warren says she doesn't care. She says, the fact of the matter is, we need you. And she says, I don't need a savior. I don't need a lover. I need a killer. And she kind of gives him a little bit of a guidance, saying, look, a scorpion, you can't change who you are. You know, a scorpion slash Hector, whether he's Hector or a scorpion, whatever he calls himself, he's not going to be anything other than a fighter, a killer, somebody who's tough. But it's how you use that. You know, you can be trained to do specific things skills that may be harmful to people, but if you use them in the right way, like if you fight the bad guys, the truly bad evil people that exist in Z Nation, then obviously you're doing it better than what you were using it for before. So I think it really teaches uh, him a very good lesson. Hopefully uh, as time goes on, he'll uh, continue to find himself, find out how to use his skills. But one thing you do wonder is, will the Red Hand return? I think they most certainly will. And you will see a prediction video from me about who I think this imposter a scorpion may be. I have to do some research first, uh, go back through some of the episodes, but I do have a prediction on that, and I'm going to share my thoughts. But before we uh, you know, get to any other videos, we do want to finish this one. And there is one other um, part of the story that was just absolutely incredible. I mean, Murphy's storyline this season has been very, very incredible. I love what they're doing with it. And it really is like the, the part of the story that is always consistent, the part that is building on itself. And what we had in this episode was, you know, Murphy's establishing himself at the museum. He has, in a sense, a cult following, you know, uh, after uh, those individuals, that family came 
uh, Murphy has attracted other individuals. There are other people that have gathered outside of the museum knowing that Murphy's there, knowing he has the cure and wanting help. And Murphy has since bitten the father and other people. So they are now under his control. And what was even more interesting about this episode is we actually delved more into the properties of the virus, the cure, different things that were going on with Murphy and connecting us back to something that we saw in season one. At the beginning of this episode, Murphy was with Dr. Murch, and Dr. Murch was drawing some blood, and he was talking with her about some things. He said that he felt very tired, he felt very weak, and even at times he felt like he was losing himself. And what we ended up finding out was <clears throat> there's a reason why Murphy's been going through the physical changes. And the reason is because of the virus and the cure itself, what was given to him. In a sense, um, Merch has <clears throat> other vaccines, like basically the same vaccine, but it would basically be a dose that would re, you know, generate him a little bit. And basically what we find out is that he would have to continue to take these different, um, shots in order to keep himself going and if he stops then he would continue to degenerate and become just like patient zero if you remember back in the season one finale that guy that was laying on that table that was just rotted away you know he looked like you know a pile of wet cement in a sense but he was still alive still you know himself that's what would happen to murphy if murphy doesn't continue to take these shots he would con continue to fall apart so that really makes sense looking back and moving forward, you know, looking back at everything, it makes sense why all of that was happening to him when his teeth fell out, when his hair fall out, when his skin came off, things like that. It's continuing to happen to him and it will if he doesn't continue to take those shots. Now, some other big development, you know, because of course Murphy's like, look, Merch, get to work. You need to get the cure. You need to help me. Well, another thing that happened in this episode was Dr. Merch gave 10,000 a shot in this episode and 10,000 wakes up from it and goes yo like why'd you do that and it turns out that Dr. Merch also has another uh, kind of a vaccine um, that when it's given to somebody who's been bitten by Murphy they are able to break free of his control however they can only do it for a temporary amount of time if they don't keep taking that then they would end up, you know, just becoming like Murphy's slave again. So Merch is basically um, free of Murphy's control. So again, it does bring questions to just how much control Murphy has over individuals. Because what was interesting was, was how was Merch able to do this if, you know, he she was always under the control of Murphy. So I think in a sense it does limit his powers, but nonetheless, they still have a connection and there's still that connection there. So... 10,000 is temporarily freed of Murphy's control, and Dr. Merge gives him the rest of those um, vaccines that will keep him free from Murphy, and their plan is to escape. They want to get out of there. Again, neither of them wants anything to do with this blend idea that Murphy has, so they want to get out. Um, and of course, at the same time, Murphy's dealing with a crowd of people that want the cure, but Murphy claims he's too tired. He doesn't, He you know, he, he's going to afraid he's going to die if he keeps biting people, which whether that's true or not, I don't know. But as the episode goes on, we come to find out that Murphy does realize what's going on. He does realize that Merch is, you know, doing something. So he bites her on the other cheek and she comes back under his control. 10,000 still free is able to make his escape. He basically leaves. He's pursued by the father and a couple of other people that Murphy has bitten. Um, you know, and he does end up making his escape through an amusement park. So he gets away. Um, and at this point, you know, hopefully we'll see what happens with him. But at this point, 10K has made his escape. So we go back to um, the, the compound. We go back to where Murphy is at. And Murphy and Dr. Murch, who is back under his control, they are starting to experiment with the vaccine. They start, you know, giving some things to people. Um, and Murphy's excited about what is to come. He's very, he's looking forward to seeing what more developments can be made. And all of a sudden, um, he hears a vision of Merch in his head um, uh, talking and basically 
he he knows that she is planning something very unfortunate. So what ends up happening is, is we do have a character death in this episode, not somebody who is necessarily on the main character list, but somebody who has been with the show on and off for quite a while, and that is Dr. Murch. What ends up happening is, is Dr. Murch is able to break free of Murphy's control again, and she walks out out amongst the zombies and of course one thing she warns 10,000 of is that once you take the vaccine that brings you out of Murphy's control you're vulnerable to the zombies again so she ends up walking out into this zombie moat that they were creating because they were creating a like a chain link fence where zombies would stay and she ends up walking out into that um, moat and sacrificing herself so she ends up being eaten by the zombies i presume she's dead her body is in the trailer in the next trailer but i assume she is dead and it's just murphy talking to her uh dead body was my assumption but um at this point we have lost dr merch and murphy has lost a very valuable member um of his plan i mean dr merch was the doctor that he was using so what does that mean for him what exactly is going to happen well we're only going to find out in the future um but i think he's going to have some kind of plan and if it doesn't work i think he has no choice but to go back with the group and try to negotiate something we'll see what happens but again great episode the best that they've had to offer this season so far and i cannot wait for next week um I am going to be doing a little bit of research into um, who I think this imposter scorpion is, what the red hand might mean. So I'll get back to you on that with a video. And I have a couple of other things coming um, this week as well that I'm looking forward to. More Walking Dead videos since we are getting closer and we did get a sneak peek. So all of this is coming back. I'm really looking forward to all of these shows coming back um, in the coming weeks. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. Have a very wonderful evening, and thank you all very much for watching.